3D printing the first layer. Welcome! In this video I'm sharing a few tips on 3D printing the first layer. All 3D printing slicers have a separate section of settings for the first layer. That's how important the first layer is. First layer depends itself on a lot of factors. And if everything else seems functional but the first layer doesn't stick, try and use glue. Always use glue. Elmer's Extreme Glue Stick should do the job pretty good. If you just dampen the existing glue on your 3D printer bed, eventually you'll cause issues, so clean your bed from time to time. First layer depends on these factors. Layer height of the first layer, which itself depends on the bed leveling. Some slicers also can accept a lower layer height for the first layer than the normal increment of the first layer height. The first layer depends very much on the filament path. If the filament path has a problem, then it is likely that your first layer may have a problem. There are instances where the first layer will print fine, but the conditions will change in the filament path for the duration of long 3D prints and those 3D prints will fail. The first layer is dependent on the extruder and the power of the VREF of the extruder stepper motor, also known as the E-axis. Single gear stock extruders have weak tension springs. Get a 3D printer bed spring to increase the tension strength and make sure you have the same proper extrusion for the entire duration of the 3D print. One big gotcha of the successful first layer can be found after the new spool of filament is installed. Once you install the new spool, there is a portion of loose filament until it gets used and then the heft and the entire spool is added to the already existing tension. Therefore, you may have a successful first layer, but after a few turns of the spool, the tension increases for two reasons. One, some spools are not well wound and require more force to pull the filament from underneath its own loops. And two, the extruder must now turn the spool weight as well as pushing the filament down the filament path. When this happens, you'll have under extrusion in the subsequent layers and maybe a failed 3D print. To test for the extruder's strength, try to hold the filament with your index and thumb. If you can stop it from moving, then the extruder may be too weak. The first layer is dependent on the surface of the bed and the material of the bed. Most 3D printer beds may have glass and in certain conditions the filament may not stick properly. Use glue, painter masking, blue tape, hairspray or anything else that may help with adhesion. Make sure that the distance in between the nozzle and the bed is about 0.2 millimeters or one sheet of paper thick. You need to have a bit of drag on the paper as you level the bed and drag the paper underneath the nozzle. If you have a huge bed surface, you'll quickly notice that the first layer will not stick properly in certain areas of the bed because large bed bow down or sag or warp. The first layer depends on the bed temperature as well as the speed of the first layer. Some slicers use a default 20 mm per second for the first layer. In addition, you can use 1.5 times the nozzle size for the layer width and up to 1 times the nozzle size for the layer height if you have issues. The quality of the filament itself is also important in the first layer as well as the subsequent layers. There are humidity conditions that affect the filament sticking to the bed and it may be very difficult recognizing the effects of water vapor absorbed inside the filament. That is why the filament comes sealed in vacuum bags and some bags have zippers for storing unused filament. The material type is also very important along with its quality. PLA is the easiest to 3D print with and it can work without a heated bed but is not going to last outside in the elements. PETG can last outside but requires a higher nozzle temperature and a higher bed temperature. ABS requires an enclosure to keep it from warping. If you have problems with the first layer, try increasing the temperature of the heated bed and the nozzle by a few degrees Celsius. 5 to 10 should do it. For example, I have seen PLA work at 190 degrees Celsius and 225. Use skirts or brims. Skirts are concentric perimeters around and not touching the print, but they prime the nozzle because some slicer, when finished printing something, do a long retraction and or when they start printing. A skirt will prime the nozzle. Brims are concentric perimeters, layers of filament that touch the print and help with stability and adjusting the bed on the fly as it's printing the brim. This I found useful on large printing beds which bow, warp or sag. I always prefer to print a brim with my 3D print. A raft is a flat surface that helps with adhesion and stabilizing the print on the bed, but it's hard to remove from the 3D print just as supports are. The first layer depends on retraction. If your nozzle does not retract on traveling on the first layer, it may leave strings of filament which can compromise portions of the first layer which may get tangled or picked up by the nozzle eventually ruining your print or portions or parts of your print. You can try extreme settings for troublesome first layers of filaments up to two times the nozzle size for width and up to one times the nozzle size for the layer height. A good first layer does not have lines of bare bed in between lines of filament but also you must see some lines in the first layer but not bare bed. If the first layer seems continuous without any joints then you may have over extrusion. If you're using Cura, try increasing the flow if you see first layer problems. Try a quick test with 200% flow, then drop it to 150%, and then dial it in until you get it right. Thanks for watching.